This is one of the most complex times I've ever been in, and I've, I've been in this uh, business for uh, roughly 50 years. We have geopolitical change coming, we have uh, conflict all over the world, uh, we have technological change, massive technological change. All of that uh, builds up to a lot of uncertainty. The definition of uncertainties today uh, is not the same as uh, what we face in the financial crisis. Through the changes in regulations uh, and also through additional uh, enhanced monitoring and risk management practice uh, for the banks. So the one sentence that comes out is a disquiet, a disconnect between what uh, a significant fraction of people are feeling and what the markets are actually doing. The generations that were around in 2008 and 9 they saw the decline, but then they've seen this remarkable boom. So I think they're, they're less afraid uh, that if there is a crash, I think their expectation is that things will be better in three to five years. The point that often gets mixed is how intertwined the coastal flows are to the heartland, to the Midwest. Toyota might have headquarters here in California or in Texas, but their factories are in the heartland. And so that foreign direct investment just filters out from the coastline throughout the country. Um, interest rates have cooperated, and that's not going to stay the same forever. Even though we've been anticipating interest rates to increase for many years, they're starting to creep up, and there's predictions that it'll creep up another percent in 2018. So that's, I think interest rates are gonna have a significant impact on real estate pricing. I, I think we, things look okay for the next year, but a caveat, things can happen to change that. Our economy's been, it's had a pretty good run here. It's, I think it's the second or third longest recovery in, the, uh, in, in our history, I think. The world is moving so quickly, I'm not sure there's a big difference between longer term risks and short term risks. If inflation continues to be where it is, then I think asset prices are justifiably high. And it makes sense to continue to buy, it makes sense to hold your portfolio. Tech in particular has probably the highest capacity to disrupt uh, the way people invest today and tomorrow. Uh, we here though see both opportunity uh, and crisis in that. Crisis in the sense that it is changing fundamentally some of the value propositions that people had, especially around real estate. Investing is about probability. And, and to the extent that you have better information to make a probable judgment, then you're going to have better outcomes. And so we, we embrace technology. Uh, I don't think we have a choice, quite frankly. If you take a longer term perspective, I, I think there's less reason to be optimistic. Uh, I think the political system is struggling with how to redistribute to the people that have lost. And what we're seeing now is that the system isn't doing a very good job. So there was a campaign where people that felt that they had been left behind uh, expected that they would get some kind of redistributive policy on health care, on taxes, and it doesn't seem to be that the system is able to deliver that in the way that people are expecting. If we can keep it together politically, uh, I think the future should be better than the past. And you know, I ran the FDIC during a very turbulent time in which uh, we had uh, thousands of bank failures, literally thousands of bank failures. It's the worst period since the Great Depression. And the people that made it are those that did not make a lot of big bets. The people who didn't make it concentrated their risk too much. The greatest lesson that we've learned, not just from uh, doing this professionally, but also speaking to some very smart investors, is around the concept of discipline. To uh, not get emotional, not get invested in your portfolio, uh, not get, not overthink things but react to the data. Holding lots of cash and being as liquid as possible. Monitor, assess, and diversify. Investors should embrace risk as an opportunity. 